the question that is on everybody's mind and you know Pilate started out with the right idea I mean if you're going to ask a question like what is truth Jesus would be the man to ask right I mean he is the Alpha and the Omega he is God he is the definer of all things and yet so many times we do exactly what Pilate did he had Jesus right there at his disposal and he asked the question what is truth and then he didn't wait around for an answer and, you know, we do that, you know, we want to know what is truth and how do I know that I know that I know it. And we've got Jesus right here at our disposal, his, his written word to tell us what truth is. Well, we don't wait around. We go off on our own little path, on our own little adventure to try to find truth, you know, try to figure out what it is and try to grasp it and hold it so that we can say we know the truth, Right. And the first mistake we make is we think of truth as an embodiment of correct knowledge. You know, a set of facts or ideas or philosophies that are right, that we can put into our brain. A set of doctrines and information about the Bible and God. And see, as long as we see truth as an embodiment of knowledge, we see it as something that can fit in our little tiny human pea brains. We see it's something that, that we think we can master, that we can become the expert at if we only study hard enough. And you know what this does, you guys? We've talked about this before. What knowledge does to us when we accumulate a, no a lot of knowledge, especially a lot of spiritual knowledge, it puffs us up. It makes us proud, you know, because people start to look up to us. You know, they think, oh, look at that. He's like a really super Christian, you know. He knows all about the Bible and God and everything, you know. We get this reputation. People will take our advice. People think that we know God. Just because we, we have a lot of facts about him, you know. But, but when, you, when you accumulate a lot of knowledge about God, you get to know this dirty little secret. And that is that it absolutely does nothing to change your core problem, which is sin. It does nothing to set you free from sin at all. In fact, you can know everything that there is to know about the Bible and God and our sinfulness and God's holiness and the problem that that creates and the plan of salvation that God has for us. You can know all of that stuff, you guys, and still be in total, complete bondage to sin. And, you know, Jesus said that he came to set us free, right? I mean, isn't that what the Bible says? And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So what's the deal, God? I learned everything there is to know. And I'm still struggling. I'm still in total bondage to this sin thing. And now, you know, then once we get puffed up and people think that we're super Christian, then we've got these other sins that start, we start adding to the list, like spiritual pride, because we can't let anybody think that we're struggling with sin. You know what I mean? And we've got to get, we, we get into deception too, because we've got to cover up the fact that we're just human. And we're struggling. And we're not really any closer to God. We just know a lot about him. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What's the deal, God? Well, the problem is, you guys, not with the word. The problem is with the fact that we had Jesus right there at our disposal, and we didn't even wait for the answer. Jesus gives us the answer. He gives us the definition of truth in his word. Because Jesus says in John fourteen six, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me whoa do you see what he just did Jesus just defined truth as God himself he defines truth as a person as God as Jesus Christ do you see how vastly different that is than thinking that truth is an embodiment of knowledge because if you think that truth is an embodiment of knowledge, then coming to know the truth is, is coming to accumulate a bunch of facts. But if you think that 
that truth, if you know from the word that truth is God himself, then, then when the Bible talks about knowing the truth, it's talking about knowing Jesus. Not knowing about Jesus, knowing Jesus. We're talking about being in a relationship with God. And it's completely different. It's a totally different ball game. So how do you know God? How do you come to know the truth? You have to do it God's way. Jesus said, if you hold to my commands, then you will really be my disciples. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you see, you can put Jesus' name in there anywhere in the Bible where it's talking about truth. You can put Jesus' name in there because he said he is the truth. So you see, he, he's saying, if you hold to my commands, if you just do what I say, then you're going to be my disciples. You know, a disciple is someone who follows uh, uh, their, their rabbi around and learns from them, learns from the way that they do things, not just, not just ideas out of a book, but they live with them and work with them and eat with them. That's what a disciple is. He said, if you hold to my commands, then you'll be my disciples. And then you'll know me <laughs> and I will set you free. No matter how much knowledge you have about the Bible and about sin and holiness and the plan of salvation, no matter how much information you have about that, that information is not going to jump off of the page and come and set you free from your sin. You can know all about your cancer. You can have the, the, the test results right there in front of you. But that's not going to help you. That's not going to cure you. You need a healer to do that. You need a doctor to do that. You need a person to come and to overcome that sin, that cancer in your spirit. The sin that keeps you in bondage. That is what Jesus has come to do. To set us free from sin. So if we want to enter into a relationship with him, we have to do it his way, you guys. It's not the way we think of accumulating truth or what we think is truth. Accumulating knowledge is not like that. We have to just do it his way. So you guys, you can be the president of God's fan club and you can know every little trivial fact that there is to know about God. You can be the smartest person on the block when it comes to the Bible and not know him as well as a little child, his own child, who simply trusts him. See, a child doesn't know much, but they know their father because they live with him. They don't have to have a bunch of head knowledge. They don't have to be really smart to know their father, right? That's the relationship that God has called us to. In Matthew 18, 3, he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You guys, little children, they don't know everything. Think about it. They're not right about everything. In fact, they're wrong about actually most stuff. <laughs> if you ask a child for their perception on the world, they're going to have a lot of misconceptions. But there's one thing that they know really well, and that's their parent, the parent that takes care of them. They intuitively know that person's character. Because when a father takes care of his child, that child knows from day one that that's the person he can count on. He knows that that father has integrity because he always does what he says he's going to do in the simple little childlike things. It doesn't take a great mind to grasp these things, you guys. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12 says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, and you guys, that means when Jesus comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. You guys, if you think that knowing the truth means being right about everything, if you think that knowing the truth means that you're going to see God exactly how he is, I got news for you. Your little childlike mind can't contain all that. You only need to know what you need to know. And you know what? You're not going to be right about everything. Now we see a poor reflection as in a mirror. You know what that means? When we see God, there are going to be things about him that we're going to be like, oh, wow. Wow, I didn't, I didn't see that. Or the way that I saw that was totally wrong. We're going to have misconceptions, but we've got to get over the pride thing, you know. 
Because God hasn't called us to be right about everything. He has called us to trust the Spirit to lead us into all truth. John 16, 13a says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. You see, you guys, when we become like little children, we are totally entrusting our care and our education to God. We're no longer in charge of our own, um, our own education and life. We no longer get to pick the courses that we want to take next week. Okay, God's going to pick them for us. God's going to pick the disciplines that he he wants to implement in our life. God's going to pick which lesson we need to learn next, which character of God, characteristic of God, we need to come to intimately know through our life and our circumstances in the word of God as he reveals it to us. And you guys, you know, when you have little kids, you understand that they have misconceptions about things and you're not going to try to correct them all at once. It's not important to do that. If you tried to do that, you just you'd overload their brains. And plus, you know, I mean, that's just part of the innocence of being a child. It's not, you know, not being right about everything. God knows the things that are important for us to learn today. And, and you know, we don't boast in what we know. And we don't have our confidence in the fact that we're going to be able to figure out all the things that we need to know. Our confidence is in the fact that our shepherd He's a good one. He knows how to keep us on the path. He knows what information we need today. He knows how to give us insight in such a way that it, that it makes the long trip from here to here. He knows how to make knowledge a reality to us. So that it's no longer just knowing in our head that we can trust in God, but we know that we know that we know the truth. We know God. Now, this totally offends our intelligence because it absolutely rips our pride apart to have to approach God this way. Because when we become like a little child and we have to say, I don't know everything, you know, it puts us on a level playing field with everybody else. We have to give up our perceived spiritual advantage, you know, that we had when we were Mr. Super Christian or Mrs. Super Christian, when everybody thought that we were so spiritual and we knew everything, we've got to give up that advantage. We have to be willing to say, you know, I don't know everything. And we have to be willing to say, which is really hard, you know, I was wrong about something, you know, and, and this is really tough when we've taught other people the wrong thing about the Bible. And this is a stumbling block that not many people can get over because usually we just can't bear to go and admit to other people that what we so passionately taught them and argued with them about concerning the Bible, that we could have been wrong about that. It's embarrassing to us. And we don't want to go there. And most people, they won't, they won't ever get over that hump. You know, it's a stumbling block to them. And you know, that's what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 18, it says this, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. And so you see, you guys, it's a stumbling block to us. It makes no sense. This is a totally different way of coming to know the truth than we would think up. And that's because God's ways are not our ways. The Bible tells us this. And we can't mix our way with God's way because it just doesn't work. Luke 5, 37 through 39 says this, And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. 
and no one after drinking old wine wants the new for he says the old is better you see you guys when we've got our heads puffed up as far as they can go stretched out with all the knowledge about the bible that it can hold and we know that we have come to know everything there is no room for growth we're stretched out as far as we can go and we cannot just simply take Jesus and add him to the information that we already have about him. We cannot just take a personal relationship with God and, and pour it into these old wineskins because there's no room for Jesus in there, you guys. Even if it were totally emptied out of the old wine, there would be no room for him. You know why? Because he is eternal. He is life. He is a spring of life. And, and he is always growing in us. God calls Jesus our he tells us that the word is, is like his divine sperm or seed that he implants inside of us. And that's Jesus Christ. He plants himself inside of us. And just like a baby, just like when, when Jesus came to the earth, when God implanted Mary with his divine seed and Jesus grew and he was born, that, that's a picture for us of what God does. When he implants Jesus into our heart, he grows, you guys. We grow into his image and we are born again. It's not something that's stagnant. It's not truth. God is not something that is finite that we can master or that we can contain in our little tiny human brains. And even if all the old wine was poured out, there would be no room because Jesus will grow. And, and we, we, we just can't go there with him. And besides that, when we're puffed up with our own pride, you guys, we're puffed up with our own knowledge. You know what it says? And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says the old is better. See, we're not going to empty out our old wine out of our old wine skins, you guys. Because as long as we're puffed up in our pride, we're going to think, well, this way is better anyway. I know everything. I know the truth. I know the way that it's supposed to be. No, until we're ready to become like a little child, there will be no room for God to become our teacher. As long as we know everything, how can God teach us anything? Because everything we think we know, we're going to try to make the Bible fit what we can understand. And you guys, he is bigger. The truth, the word of God, it's bigger than what we can understand. And when there are things that don't make sense to us, we're going to manipulate them around and twist them around and pare them down and slice them and dice them, take the, the scriptures out of context, do whatever we have to do to cram it into this little space of our understanding. No, you guys, it doesn't work. You can't put new wine into old wineskins. You got to become like a little child. See, the cool thing about kids, you guys, is they're not embarrassed to learn. Something happens to us as we get older. We, we kind of get this sense of pride about what we know and what we don't know. And we don't want anybody to think that they're teaching us something. And, you know, if somebody tells us something we don't know, we, we we're like, oh, yeah, I knew that. You know, what is it in us? Because if, if that person thinks they know more than us, then that makes them higher than us, more exalted, you know. And, and we've got this valuing system going on by which we, we, we decide, you know, how, how valuable we are by how smart we are and how much we know and how much insight we have when it really doesn't even matter. The important thing is not, you guys, in the kingdom of God, the important thing is not what you know, but who you know. And a little child, you know, when you tell a kid something that they didn't know, they're not embarrassed that they didn't know it. They're just like, wow, really cool, you know. They're excited about it. They have this sense of wonder that just, that just can't be beat. And, and when you correct a child about a misconception that they have, there's no sense of shame because, you know, they, they misunderstood something. They're just like, oh, really? Wow. And they may even laugh about it because they misunderstood something. See, that's that father-child relationship. There's no condemnation in it. There's no shame in it. There's no pride in it. There's no mistrust in it. But that child is totally, completely vulnerable to its father. Totally dependent on the fact that that father is going to teach the child exactly what it needs to know today. So how do we come to know this truth, this God? 
Jesus tells us, he said, if you hold to my teaching, then you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. All we have to do, you guys, is hold to his teachings. Obey what he told us to do. Does that mean that we're never going to mess up? We're never going to fall down. We're never going to disobey. No, kids do that. Their father corrects them, does whatever he needs to do to discipline them. Picks him back up, dusts him off, and goes on down the road with him. But you guys, as long as we stay in the light, as long as we stay in that relationship with God, he will never reject us. And he will free us from sin. But what we need to do today, if we want to know God today, we need to obey his teaching. And we don't need to get confused and try to look at all the Old Testament laws and all the New Testament and think that we've got to figure out everything that God wants us to do. See, Jesus made it easy for us. Easy enough for a child to understand. He summed up all of the commandments in two commandments. He said, number one, you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you want to know God, concentrate on these two things, on obeying these two things. You guys, if you would get up, if we would just get up in the morning and set our minds on finding every opportunity that we can to obey those two commandments then we would get so much further in coming to know God than we could ever get spending, uh, spending all day and all night studying in a library somewhere about God and creating arguments and debates over which viewpoint on Scripture is right. <laughs> it's very simple, you guys. Find somebody and love them. Find the least important person that you know and do something nice for them. Put somebody else ahead of yourself sacrifice something for somebody else treat people as you would want to be treated as you wish that they would treat you not just as you would expect them to treat you no as you would wish in your wildest dreams that they would treat you forgive the person that has hurt you love your neighbor this is how we know that we have come to know him that it says this in first john 2 3 through 5 it says, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. See, he, he tells us everything we need to know. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possession and sees a brother in need and has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Because you see you guys, when we realize that we don't know everything and we realize that we're not perfect and that we screw up, when we come into that humble relationship with him, there are going to be times when our hearts come and try to beat us up and say, you know what, you, you don't know God, you're, you're not a Christian, look at you, you're so messed up. You're supposed to have everything all together. But this is how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. We just get up every morning and look for an opportunity to love another person. And if we see that God is growing us, in loving other people in practical ways, not with words and tongue, that doesn't count, you guys, but in actions and in truth, really caring about people. When we see that God is growing us in that, then it sets our hearts at rest when our hearts condemn us and all the questions about, you know, once saved, always saved, and predestination and all these confusing things that all these intellects have come up with, they don't matter. Because your assurance is not in what you know. Your assurance is not in that you've got the formula right. Your assurance is in the fact that, hey, I'm walking with my father today, and I know that because I loved somebody today, and I knew that that wasn't in me before. It's the evidence of God in our lives. It's the evidence that we know the truth. God bless you guys, and I'll see you again next week. Yeah.